look at that. Isn't that beautiful? The patterns of nature out here in the bush. So we've got these beautiful sort of striations and this is probably one of the biggest teeth that you can see out here. So as you can see we have a piece of an elephant tusk which is broken off so this is a really really cool find. This is not something that you're going to see every single day and we were walking along and we managed to spot it on the edge of a termite mound and so it seems like it has broken off and it, we'll know that this is probably a young bull just because of the thickness that it's starting to taper off and at the end is quite sort of blunt and big. This females typically don't have as thicker tusk like this towards the end. So we think it's a young male that may have broken his tusk and this is a fairly recent break. This tusk has not been lying out here for too many weeks. It's probably Rex and I reckon between a month and two months since this was broken off and has been lying out here. You can see there's not really a collection of too much dirt. The tusk is still very smooth. It hasn't been weathered in any way but you can imagine the force that happened here and it must have been when two bulls were play fighting because there's no evidence of any trees that have been broken in this area. So it must have been two young bulls fighting with one another. And if I just turn it a little bit, Seb, there we go. We can see how it has broken. And look at how it actually ends up being sort of quite rough inside the tooth itself. So the tooth itself inside is very, very rough. And it only gets smooth on the edges because of all the use that they put it through. So it really is quite an interesting thing to see. This is not something that we're going to see every single day. That's for sure. Now, interestingly enough, when we were sitting here, now I need to just find this. Ah, there we go. It's behind me. We managed to come across another thing, a buffalo horn. So this is a really cool way just to see the difference between these two. So often everybody asks us what's the difference between tusks and horns. Well there you go. You can see this is a solid, solid tooth and you can see inside there there is very much a solid sort of substructure. Whereas if we look inside the horn itself you can see it's just a keratin sheath that will have gone over a bone that is on a skull somewhere around here and so this is just the keratin part of it. The tusk does not have a keratin sheath in any way whatsoever and so that's the difference. You can actually see how the keratin is starting to flake now with age so bits of it are starting to fall off and this is very similar to what our um, nails are. You can see it's very hair like in its structure so that is hardened hair that has come off a buffalo itself. So this is a really cool sort of comparison between the two and the weight of the, the sort of weight difference between these is massive. This is obviously very light because it's just hair that has now come off the bone but this weighs a lot more than what it looks like. Even though it's not a massive sort of piece of a tusk it probably weighs I would say close to a kilogram or two pounds and it is because of how dense it is. And what is amazing to me is just looking at all the the sort of markings on the tusk and thinking that each one of these markings has some sort of a story to tell. As this elephant has moved around in its life you can see little scratches and sort of chips here and there so this would have been all where it has kind of knocked up against either other tusks or branches and really it is quite amazing to think what this has probably seen. Now a tusk of this size would easily be on an elephant that is probably in its teen years or its early 20s so it's been around for a long long time and so you can imagine what it's seen in those 20 years. What a really, really cool find that is. And it's not every day, like I say, that you're going to find this. In, in fact, in all my time in the Sabi Sands, this is only the second piece of tusk that I've ever come across while out walking. So we really are very fortunate. Now, the other interesting thing is you can actually see how much it cracked actually so you imagine how this the force that must have been sort of applied to be able to break through this solid 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 stuff if you try and move this you can't move it at all even trying to open that crack it's impossible but yet the force applied between these two males was enough to not only shatter this piece off but to cause these huge fissures down the tusk itself absolutely amazing now can you imagine having this in your mouth, like protruding like this? Must be quite something to have a tusk like this and then be able to use it. I think it would be quite fun actually. So Rita, you're wondering how an elephant's tusk would have broken and how we would have ended up with a situation like this. Well, what's happened here is two males have probably been fighting, or play fighting, and so they come up together. So you can imagine if we have the two tusks like this, they'll come towards one another and they headbutt each other with the sort of front side of their head, and the tusks go in and they hit on one another. They then start moving their heads as they try and push, and sometimes what they'll do is leverage, and the tusk will get caught with the other tusk. And now as this bull leverages up his head, so this tusk can't move anymore, and it breaks. 
breaks and then it falls off and that's how we find pieces of tusk like this. So really, really interesting. You can also see sometimes they'll break it. Females and males will also break it on trees. But the reason why I say it's not a tree in this particular section is you can see around me, there is absolutely nothing. And this is where the tusk was lying, is right near the edge. So there's no sign of any big tree that was forced down here, which could have potentially caused that. Also on the tusk itself, there is no visible staining on the tusk. So there's no sort of sign of any tree material. And even though this has been lying out for a month or two, you would still have probably had green sort of stains or red stains from the tannins if this was being used to dig into the bark of the tree. And you would have found that there would have been some sort of residue of plant material, which on this tusk is absolutely nothing. And actually, if we look here, now this is really interesting. Can you see that there, Seb? Yep. So there's a little drop of blood there. So that will indicate also that they were busy fighting. And so this little drop of blood is probably when they were busy sort of pushing one another. The tip of the tusk might have nicked the other one's face. And there's a little drop of blood that is splattered around here. So really interesting. It also could have been when the tusk broke, might have damaged a bit of the root and blood has then fallen down. And actually, the more I look at it, the more spots of blood I can see. That's amazing. Wow. What a special find. It's not every day that you get to see things like this, that's for sure. Now, interestingly enough, like I said, we found the sort of buffalo horn, but I wanted to show you the horn itself. But if you have a look here, our buffalo skull, unfortunately, the horns have been broken off completely. Now, the reason why these horns have been broken off is not because of a fight like what we've seen with the, um, with the elephant tusk. This has actually been done by what we saw to start the show. So this is Jamie's hyenas that have done this. You can actually see their sort of chew marks on the edges. And what would have happened with this is as we've sort of this buffalo died, there would have been a lot of feeding that would have taken place. And you can see even the front of the face was eaten out here. So this is very typical of a predator activity. But then over time, as we start to get sort of more moisture and there's a bit of rain that falls, so the scent of this will start to sort of activate again. And then you'll find hyenas will come in and they'll start to chew this again. And they'll use all the calcium that they're going to get out of these bones. And you'll end up with a situation where they chew off the edges of the horns and try and maybe sort of feed off all of that. Now, it's sometimes good just to check inside all the crevices of these buffalo skulls because often you can find things living inside there. Now, there's also quite a cool difference too between, there we go, one tooth and another. You can see just how much bigger the elephant's teeth get. Right, now we've been talking about hyenas chewing on this buffalo skull, so why don't we go across to Jamie and see how the little cubs are doing.